Gobi does it again. Not long after dropping the Emergen 2.0, we learn that Gobi has been secretly working on another TV color syncing device, suitable for users with 45-inch televisions and monitors, the FlowPro light bars. Naturally, this was very exciting news, but then the FlowPro bars were released into the market and we realized that we have questions. But at the heart of it all, we simply want to understand how the new Govi bars compare to the new Immersion Kit and what is the best option for my unique setup. Well, that is my primary motivation for the making of this video. So wonder no more. Here we go. Okay guys, the primary focus of this review will be the Govi Flow Pro bars. So if you'd like to see more specific details on the Immersion Kit, make sure to check out my previous Govi video comparing the new kit to the original model. That said, the review will be organized as such. First, we'll briefly take a look at the specs for the Govi Flow Pro bars, and then we'll take a look at what you get inside of the box, followed by some installation tips and tricks, and then we'll take a look at some of the key features including scenes and music modes. Next, we'll do a head-to-head -head demonstration of the Govi bars versus the 2.0 Immersion Light Kit, and then I'm gonna follow that up with a second demonstration where I'll showcase the two units working in tandem to create the ultimate immersive experience. And finally, I'll wrap things up with my final thoughts, key takeaways, and then I'll explicitly discuss any drawbacks, gripes, and areas where I'd like to see improvement going forward for the Govi Flow Pro Bars. Now, interestingly enough, in addition to the all-encompassing Flow Pro Bars kit, Govi is also selling a more limited version of the bars on Amazon for $49.99. From what I gather, this limited version does not support voice assistant and they do not ship with the 1080p camera that is used to capture and translate colors being displayed across the screen. But of course, we're going to focus on the complete Govi Flow Pro Bars kit with the TV color syncing technology. Now what sets these light bars apart from your average smart lamp is that like the Immersion Kit, they feature the IC chip technology. But in addition to the multicolor line of lights that they're able to produce, the Flow Pro Bars have two additional dedicated chips one to produce cool white temperatures and the other to create warm white. You'll see lights with this technology often advertised as RGBICWW, where the two W's stand for cool white and warm white. Now, the Flow Pro bars have a working temperature of 100 to 240 volts, an input of 12 volts, and a luminosity of 400. Dimensions are roughly 10.5 by 3 by 3, and they have a working temperature of 14 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. These specs are very much on par with the Philips Hue Play Bars, although the Play Bars are listed to have a total luminosity output of 530 as opposed to 400 for the Flow Bars. The dimensions for the Philips Hue Play Bars as opposed to the Flow Bars are as follows. To no surprise, the Flow Pro Light Bar ship in a much larger box than with the Immersion Light Kit. And as with the Immersion Light Kit, the box is decorated in the very same color scheme with the blues, purples, and magenta hues, which I really do like. Upon opening the box, we're immediately presented with a second box, which houses the two light bars themselves. And there are some brief instructional images to show you how to attach the light bars to either the screen or the tabletop mounting brackets. As you can see, the bars are secured very well inside of a styrofoam encasing. And for anyone wondering, yes, they are hardwired to each other, meaning that the USB-C cable that attaches them to one another cannot be removed. Now, when I initially realized this, I knew that cable management was gonna be made more difficult for me if I wanted to have the light bars freestanding on either side of the TV, because my TV cabinet is mounted to the wall, so I don't have the luxury of tucking or hiding cables behind it. The length of the cable between the two light bars is roughly 11 feet, just to give you an idea of how far apart you'll be able to place them. And of course, you have to keep in mind that the USB-C end still has to reach the control box wherever you choose to place it. Very quickly, let's take a look at the supporting accessories that you will need in order to make the magic happen. First off, Govi does include both sets of brackets inside the box, which is awesome. The first set allows you to freestand the light bars vertically, either below or to the sides of the screen. And the second pair you'll need if you choose to mount them behind your TV or your monitor. We'll look more into this during installation, so hang tight. Of course, the power brick is included inside, as well as the eight calibration squares in the 1080p camera, which, for all intents and purposes, is identical to the one that comes with the Immersion 2.0 kit. And finally, we have the control box, which is also identical to the Immersion kit, at least from a visual standpoint, with three physical buttons, power on and off, color button, and the music slash dimmer button. Switching gears to installation. 
Now the installation for the Flow Pro bars is obviously much more easier compared to the Immersion Kit because you'll have just two bars to work with as opposed to four LED sections that need to be installed precisely. If you're planning on freestanding the bars on a tabletop, life is made even easier. You won't need to measure too much or be overly precise because adjustments can always be made after the fact. That brings us to pro tip number one. If you choose to go the tabletop route and you find that you're running a bit short on cord, use a USB male to female data extension cable. My light bars are roughly eight feet apart and on top of that, I had to run the cord up a raceway strip to connect to the control box which is mounted behind the TV. So I definitely had to go this extension route. I'll drop a link down below for this extension cable that I'm using specifically. Pro tip number two, whether you have clearance behind your TV stand or not to tuck cables, you'll want to clean up those long wires connecting to light bars. Introducing Delamu Cord Concealer. Unlike a lot of cable concealers out there, this particular one is very narrow and unassuming. It measures just 0.59 inches in width and 0.4 inches in height, so it has a very small footprint and it'll keep your area looking clutter free and clean. They come in white, black, gray, or brown, so you'll have a really good shot at matching things up with your decor, and they can be mounted to pretty much any surface. Now, as you can see, I have my raceway cord covers placed on top of my TV stand cabinet, because as I mentioned during the unboxing, the cables are not removable from the light bars. So I didn't have the option of drilling small holes to hide the cords for the best possible look. And I definitely wasn't about to drill four to five inch holes in my tabletop just to hide two narrow cords. This is why I much prefer removable cables. They're just easier to work with, and if they ever become damaged, in most cases, you can always replace them. Now, on the other hand, a lot of you will probably prefer to mount these light bars on the back of your TV or your monitor, which is honestly the best way to go for the cleanest look possible. That brings us to pro tip number three. Before you begin the peel and stick process, mark the center points on the back of your TV on each side using the calibration link in the description from a guy named Shane Greenfield. Now I stumbled upon this calibration video after uploading my last Govi video, but let me tell you now, this video is awesome. As you can see, it provides a digital version of the eight areas of interest for calibration. Now, depending on your TV, your camera may or may not be able to clearly pick up all eight digital squares. But if you have any trouble, you can simply place your physical squares over the images using masking tape, of course, and it really takes the labor out of having to measure to obtain the precise center on the sides and on the top and bottom of your TV screen. Shane, I don't know you personally, but thank you for this. Really. Now, once you have the center markings in place on the back of your TV, you can confidently install your screen mounting brackets. I actually found it easier if first you attach the light bars to the brackets before sticking the brackets to the back of the TV. Now, when you do this, go as far to the edge as possible while keeping the bars out of your line of sight from the front of the TV. Because once you have them installed and mounted, the angle of the FlowPro bars cannot be adjusted. They're extremely bright, but they fire straight back. So definitely keep this in mind. In the comments from my previous Gobi video, there was a lot of talk about getting the 2.0 immersion kit to work with larger screens beyond 65. This is definitely possible, but it's gonna require a sacrifice. And that is that you have to install the light strips significantly further inward towards the center of the TV away from the edges. That brings us to pro tip number four. This is just a theory because I still need to pick up a second immersion kit for my 75 inch TV. But if you have your 2.0 installed on a TV that's larger than recommended and you find that the brightness of the light strips are greatly reduced by their placement and you're willing to live with two cameras, consider mounting the FlowPro light bars on the outsides of each light strips on the sides. Again, I haven't tested this just yet, but in theory, this should balance things out and assist with the brightness issues. That brings us to the fifth and final pro tip, camera placement for both the Govi Flow Pro bars and the immersion kit. If you're digging this setup and you're interested in replicating it, it's fairly simple to do. Both cameras are obviously attached to my soundbar, but placing two cameras in the same area of the TV means that neither is perfectly centered. When I first had the crazy idea of trying this, I was worried about just that and I feared it would affect performance and cause the immersion kit to display colors inaccurately in the video part mode. But I can confirm for you now that this won't be an issue as long as you auto-correct for this slight misalignment inside the app during calibration. You'll go through the calibration process as usual, and the only thing that you'll need to do differently is place the top pointer either further to the left or to the right to counter the off-center position of the camera. Just make sure that the top white dot is perfectly centered above the orange square at the very top. 
Now, obviously, if you choose to place one camera on top and one camera on bottom, calibration will be no different from if you were using a single camera. Features. Now, again, the TV color syncing technology will be the primary focus for this review, but because RGBIC light bars fall under less chartered territory, I'm going to highlight some additional key features that the FlowPro bars are bringing to the table. When I first fired up the FlowPro light bars, I was absolutely blown away by the sheer luminosity. I mean, these little lights can really hold their own, so much so that certain colors can be blinding. So you really don't want to be staring into the light source directly up close. To be on the safe side, just make sure that these light bars stay aimed at the wall. I would even go as far as to say that these are two to three times brighter than the immersion light strips, which I really did not expect. Now the FlowPro bars feature four music modes. We have Vivid, Rhythm, Strike, and Vibrate, all of which can be adjusted by sensitivity, you can have the colors change automatically, or you can DIY your own color scheme. There's also 12 scenic modes to choose from, Aurora and Rainbow being among my favorite. And of course, as with many of Govi's other RGB light strips, you're able to DIY your own scenes and create some really cool effects. I also want to highlight that each light bar can be controlled independently, so you can have one on and one off, one blue and one red, and so on. All right, guys, you've made it this far, and even if you skipped ahead, I get it. This is what we all came to see, the head-to-head -head demonstration. Let's get to it. Okay guys, time to wrap things up and share my final thoughts and key takeaways. When the Gobi Flow Pro bars first arrived on my doorstep, I wasn't really sure what to expect. If at this price point, there will be build quality issues, if the mounting brackets will work as advertised, how the brightness levels would be, because I mean, we're talking about a product that is merely a fraction of the asking price of the Philips Hue Play Bars. But I can confidently sit here today and say that most of my concerns have been put to rest because these light bars have a solid build quality with a wealth of features and customization levers, all supported by a highly functional app that is constantly being refreshed and updated to provide users with the best experience possible. So, yes, I'd have to say that I'm impressed with the value proposition that the Govi Flow Pro bars are bringing to the table. But now, with all of that said, I have to address the elephant in the room. The FlowPro bars cannot leverage the IC chip technology while using the video TV color syncing feature. And at the moment, this is also the case for DIY customizations. As it stands now, as I'm shooting this video, the four music modes and the 12 preset scenic modes are the only gateways into utilizing the IC chip technology 
for the Flow Pro bars. There's another thing that was bugging me while I was performing test runs for the TV color syncing modes for both the bars and the Immersion 2.0. The Flow Pro bars have independent controls for each bar, as we touched on earlier. But why is it that video mode doesn't take full advantage? Let's take a look at this still image, for example. This is probably going to be my thumbnail. Notice that instead of mimicking the fire being displayed on the left, as with the Immersion Kit, the left and the right light bar are both syncing blue. Now I've run a number of scenarios where one side of the TV is a completely different contrast from the other, but for whatever reason, the light bars are always in sync. Honestly, I'm willing to be more forgiving to the fact that the light bars don't leverage IC for video at the moment. Perhaps it's just too complex, or there's still some things that need to be ironed out. But I do feel the Flow Pro bars should be able to differentiate opposing colors on opposite sides of the screen. A single solid color of red for the left bar in this example shouldn't be too difficult to achieve. And so the fact is, while the IC chip feature is very cool and promising for the Flow Pro bars, it's very limited right now and leaves a lot to be desired. But I'm hoping Govi can address some of these issues in software patches in the near future. And if not, hopefully the Flow Pro bars 2.0 will take full advantage of the IC chip technology. One last thing that I observed for the Flow bars is that the color transition can be a bit jittery as compared to the Immersion Kit. And for some reason, when the bars are dimmed below 50% brightness and the screen is predominantly black, instead of shifting the lights to a dim white glow, as with the Immersion light strips, the light bars shift to a dim red glow. Now, I actually picked up a second pair of light bars to troubleshoot this, and the issue continued to persist, so this is most likely a large-scale issue. But as with my other gripes described, I'm really hoping that this is something that can be easily patched through an update. Moreover, when I first tried the Immersion Kit with the Flow Pro bars together, what I was most interested to see was how in line the colors would be to one another. Would there be any lag in between? Would the colors match up for the most part? Or would these two kits placed in the same area just be overkill? Well, I'm sure opinion is going to vary for something like this, but I feel that the two color syncing kits look phenomenal together because the light bars create a new layer of color contrast and they really help to fill out the darker areas of my entertainment center. But I do have to keep the brightness level of the bars 20% or below when using alongside the Immersion Kit because they're so incredibly bright that they'll wash out the LEDs on the sides of the TV if I max them out. But if I'm being honest, I'm still working on getting used to those two cameras pointed at my TV. But for what I'm getting out of these two color syncing devices working together like this, in my opinion, it's worth the minor inconvenience. Another huge pro with this dual setup is that I have the ability to leverage two different modes simultaneously. A lot of times I'll have the immersion lights color syncing with my TV, while the light bars are syncing with the music audio. This works really well for parties or watching music videos or live concerts. But when it comes to this head-to-head -head comparison of the Govi bars versus the strips, the Govi Immersion Kit is clearly the strongest of the two products from an immersive perspective. It's more ironed out and has a number of advantages over the light bars. Probably the biggest being that the light strips leverage the full power of the IC chip technology during video mode. And second being that the LEDs emit a much more even distribution of light around your TV screen. With the light bars comparatively, you're getting more double-sided coverage, though it will be less of an issue for TVs and monitors that are smaller than 45 inches. And again, the light bars are significantly brighter than the Immersion Kit. I mean, it's not even close. And if you put the color seeking feature aside for these two Govi products, the Flow Pro bars actually have a few other advantages over the Immersion Kit. For starters, the light bars can serve a multitude of functions outside of TV bias lighting because you're not stuck with one specific location, even after mounting the screen brackets to the back of your TV. Because at any given time, the light bars can be detached from the mount housing and repositioned wherever you like. If need be, you can slip them off the back of your TV, place them in the tabletop brackets, and use them for a reading light, for example. Remember that the bars have both a dedicated cool and white chip. It's just a real bummer that these bars cannot be linked with a second pair of Govi bars, because even more use cases could be unlocked. And this would honestly make substituting the bars in place of the immersion kit even more attractive. For those out there with smaller screens, you could place a bar on all four sides of your TV or your monitor and call it a day. Of course, you can still make this happen, but you know, a thousand cameras isn't for everybody. So 
To summarize, which of these two TV color syncing options should you consider? I'll put it this way. If you don't own either of the two and you have a screen size that is 55 or larger, even if you have a TV that's in the 70 to 80 inch range, I would start the foundation with the Immersion 2.0 and expand from there if need be by introducing the Flow Pro light bars to the darker areas of my entertainment space, whether it be behind your television or off to the sides as I have done with my setup. On the other hand, if you happen to be working with a TV or monitor that's below 45 inches, I would start off with the light bars and fill things out first. Who knows, you may be more than satisfied with the output, but if that's not the case, just know that you're going to have to get very creative with installing the excess strip for the Immersion 2.0, and make sure that you'll be okay with not having the colors perfectly represented around the screen in the video part mode. Well that about wraps things up for this one. If you found any part of this video to be helpful, make sure to give a quick thumbs up and to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, peace. Mr. Tech suggests.